All right, so next up is section one three, where we are going to understand how um, to do simple random sampling. So if you are going to be conducting a study, um, we have to get our individuals or our participants to be able to um, collect our data. In order to do that, we are going to take what is called a random sample. All right, so random sampling is the process of using chance to select individuals from a population to be included in the sample. Um, we want to be random. We want, do, we want to make sure that everybody has the equal chance of being selected so that we get an accurate representation of our population, okay? Um, if, however, someone uses convenience to obtain a sample, the results are going to be considered meaningless. So convenience means you do something that is convenient or easy for you to get the data versus being accurate and using random methods. All right, so a sample of size little n from a population of size capital N is obtained through simple random sampling if every possible sample size N has an equally likely chance of occurring. The sample is then called a simple random sample. So we want to make sure that we use randomness um, to get our sample. So there's a few ways in um, which we can do that here and I'm going to explain that in just a second. <clears throat> All right, so first we're going to go through an example here of how um, we could understand this. So Sophia has four tickets to a concert. Six of her friends, Yolanda, Kevin, sorry, Yolanda, Michael, Kevin, Marissa, Annie, and Katie have all expressed an interest in going to the concert. Sophia decides to randomly select three of her six friends to attend the concert. List all the possible samples of size three from the population of size six. And then note that once an individual is chosen, he or she cannot be chosen again for that specific sample. So what we can do is we can go through and we can list every trio of people. <clears throat> so you can see here, we started with Yolanda and Michael as the first two, and then we changed the third one. So Yolanda, Michael, Kevin, Yolanda, Michael, Marissa, Yolanda, Michael, Annie, Yolanda, Michael, Katie. Okay, so that is four um, samples right there or four groups of three that could be chosen to get these tickets. Now, this isn't all of them. I'm going to go to the next page and you're going to see how many there actually are. Okay, so then we go and we pair Yolanda with Kevin. And then add Marissa, Yolanda, Kevin, Annie, Yolanda, Kevin, Katie. And we're gonna repeat this process until all possible groups of three are chosen. So what I have here is I had four, one, two, three, four on this page, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There are 20 different groups of three friends that I could, that, that this friend, that what was her name? Um, Sophia, to give her tickets. Okay, so it's a long process to have to list all of these out. So normally that's not what we're going to do. Um, we're going to use chance to help us determine those three people. And we'll go through, like I said, a few different ways in which we could do that. Okay. So the last part of this says comment on the likelihood of it being Michael, Kevin, and Marissa. So each trio can only happen one time. So this is only one possible of my entire. 20 that I found. So only one of the 20 possible samples contains Michael, Kevin, and Marissa together. So there's a one in 20 chance that the random sample would be those three. Okay, 
So we're going to go through one example way um, here for how to obtain a random sample, um, but some other easy ways here for just this like group of um, six students. I could have very easily written all six friends on a piece of paper, put them in a hat and drawn out three. Okay, that would be random. There is no, um, there's nothing bad about that. There's nothing um, that would be biased or like saying, well, I like you the best, so you get to come. Um, so we wanna make sure that it's completely random, that there's nothing impacting the likelihood of someone cho um, being chosen. So you put all the names in the hat, draw them out, Ta-da, done. Um, there's so many different things online that you can enter all of the names um, and then have it, it'll sometimes it's even a spinner and it'll spin and it stops on somebody. Um, there's ones where you can do a random list organizers. So you can put all of the names in a list and hit shuffle and it's going to rearrange the order. Let me see. I think I can find one of those. Um, let me see if I can remember where it is. There we go. This is the one I've used before. All right. So it was Michael, um, Kevin. Marissa, Annie, Katie, and Yolanda. What's the other one? Annie. Okay, so I've got my one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so they're in there in my order. And then what I can do is I click randomize and then I would pick the top three. Now, every time I click this is gonna give me a different top three. So randomize. So it would be Yolanda, Marissa, and Kevin would get to go. Do it again. This time, Kevin, Katie, and Michael get to go. Do it again. Now it's Marissa, Annie, and Kevin. So every time I would do this, it's going to give me a different grouping. Um, so again, this is random. It's totally, I am totally out of the picture here. I am letting the computer just spin them around and give me three okay so just a quick little thing you could see here all right so another way to do this is to um have an entire list of all the individuals you have and give them a number and then we use a random number table or a number generator um and again those are all with technology to then spit out numbers and we're going to pick however many the top first however many it was that we needed so for example um the accounting firm of Sinise and Associates has grown to make sure their clients are still satisfied with their services they are receiving uh, the company decides to send a survey out to simple random samples of five of its 30 clients okay so they have 30 clients and they want to select five so here's what they do. They put the members in alphabetical order and then numbered them from one to 30. Okay, so the first one listed alphabetically has a number one, the last alphabetically is number 30. Okay, we could have used my website here, entered them all in and then just click randomize and it would give me the first five. This is gonna be using a number generator. Okay, so this uses a number generator. Um, you have to set a seed, and the seed is the initial point for the generator to start creating random numbers. Um, so really, if you have 30, you're gonna start with one. Um, and then it's gonna pick any random numbers. It's gonna spit out a list of numbers for you. And then what you do is you go through that entire list of numbers and match back who they go to. So if your string spit out 5, 14, 36, 
looking like that. If it spit out those numbers in a row, we would go back to the list and find out who number five was, find out who number 14 was, 36, 13. Sometimes I like to do um, an example from the homework. All right, so here we go. Here's an example from your homework. Um, as part of a college literature course, students must select three classic works of literature from the provided list and complete critical book reviews for each selected work. Write a short description of the process that can be used to um, generate a simple random sample. Really, you're just picking which of these four work. Okay, so I can look here. I have um, nine books to choose from. They are both numbered and labeled. All right, so let's see here. Um, number the books from one to nine and use a random number table to produce three different one digit numbers and select the corresponding books. That is random sampling. List each book on a separate piece of paper, place them in a hat and pick three. We said that is random sampling. Asking someone their opinion on which three books are best. That is not random sampling. That is not using chance to pick our sample. List the names in alphabetical order and take the first three. That is not random sampling, okay? There is no randomness to it. I am just selecting the first three alphabetically, okay? If I put them in alpha order and then randomize them, that would work, but that is not gonna be random just choosing the first three alphabetically. All right, so now I want to show you here how this number generator thing works. So we have a random number table that goes in order here. And what you're going to do is you're going to look for the first. Let's see here. If you start on the left and take the first three numbers between one and nine, what three books would be selected? So I have four, I have nine. I've already used nine, I've already used four. I gotta have three different numbers. So four, nine, and the next different number is seven. So I'm gonna double check here. Four is the scarlet letter, nine is the sun also rises, and seven is the jungle. So for me, that's this group here. So four, nine, and seven are the first three distinct numbers. And that matches to those three books. Okay, you're gonna have another one here where you have to pick three possible courses. So you are going to have to do like we did with the list of Yolanda um, and all the friends of Sophia. You have five of them here and you need to pick three of them. So you're gonna go through and select all the pairings of three courses that you can choose. Okay, so things to note, make sure you double check numbers. I'm not sure if they're gonna put in a number over here that is not in this list. If you do, you cannot choose that, okay? You cannot take a class twice. You need to have three distinct classes and you need to make sure you have three of them. Hence, this one will not work. Okay, so just going through and looking is 693, 675, and 662. Those are three of the five. So that would be one of them. Is 607, 693, and 641. That would be one of them. So we're gonna go through and double check which of these groupings come from this list. Groups of three different numbers. Okay. Yep, I can move on. All right, so hopefully that helps a little bit, um, at least understand these. I know sometimes these questions on the homework throw a little bit of a wrench in the system um, and have students have a little bit of trouble with them. So I'm hoping that that helps a little bit with um, seeing me work through them. So you can kind of understand the process a little bit better. All right, well, I will see you in video 1.4.